Hello, it's Who Time. For those loyal viewers, sorry it's been quite a while. With the arrival of my son and simultaneously my mum falling very ill, those two things have done wonders to exterminate my free time. For those new viewers who've just joined, welcome and thanks for joining. And now I'm going to summarise all the Doctor Who toy news for 2024. For once, the outlook is actually very bright. First, let's talk Toy Fair. This took place back in January at the Olympia in London. It's a huge annual event for toy manufacturers. It's been going 70 years. Character Options Limited of course attended this year and despite restricted photography allowed, some snaps did make their way onto the World Wide Web, showing excitingly completely new Doctor Who figures and toys in the pipeline for mass retail. Pop those corks and those champers, as it looks like we're about to get a shooty Gatwar 15th Doctor, Millie Gibson's Ruby Sunday and a Wrath Warrior from the 60th anniversary special The Star Beast. Notably you can tell from the photos that these new figures seem to have ball joints at the shoulders, a luxury that the 10th Doctor has never received. 14th Doctor has got it though. They look super detailed, high quality, more akin to the Hasbro figure lines like Marvel Legends, Star Wars Black Series, etc. The second photo I've got shows a toy of the 15th Doctor's new Sonic. It looks a little bigger than the actual prop and more toy-like. The actual prop got shown off by someone on the production team on set for the Christmas special. And as you can see, the colours are slightly off, but it's still subject to licensor's approval, so the BBC can still adjust it. So hopefully it will be changed to be a bit more accurate before it hits store shelves. I also hope that the base of it swivels round like the actual prop. Personally, I'm not. I'm a huge fan of the new Sonic aesthetic, but by Joe, you betcha, I'm going to buy a toy of it anyway. Now, for those eagle-eyed viewers, you may have spotted something below the Sonic in that Toy Fair pick. That's right, there's a big plushie of the meat like the Wrath Warrior from the 60th anniversary special, the Star Beast. How exciting! You can also get another sneak peek of it here in this recent clip from the podcast They Like to Watch, where Russell T. Davis is being interviewed. <gasps> Come on. Russell's showing us uh, a, a short prototype meme. The Who Corner to Corner podcast had an episode on the 17th of March interviewing Al Dewar, the head of the Doctor Who figure line, as well as Ed Barnett Ward, who works on the figure sculpts, originally physically with his hands, and now digitally. This shed more light on Toy Fair and how it works. Al Dewar explained that the event is designed to showcase new product to retailers. Often there's orders already on the books, and retailers turn up to see what they're actually buying, and then they can ask for any final changes, adjustments, and possibly alter their order for more, hopefully. Plus, other retailers who haven't made an order yet can do so at this event. He further explained that some of the figures and the Sonic are definitely being produced. Feedback from retailers was positive towards Doctor Who again, which is great news. I do worry that we may not see the Wrath Warrior figure and the meat plushie though. Al Dewar mentions that some of the figures are set in stone, but not all of them. Plus, you know, the 60th anniversary has come and gone, so it's not very timely releasing them way after the event. But still, these days often toy companies don't release stuff in line with the media that they belong to. In the case of Star Wars, you often have to wait quite a long time. I've just got this Book of Boba Fett Mando. The series came out in 2021 and I've only got this just now in 2024. Is it possible? Speaking of figures that didn't come out in a timely fashion, taking it back to Doctor Who where we should be, and again, in January 2024, we got a Fugitive Doctor and TARDIS set. Can you believe it? I obviously had to get one. I was on there constantly refreshing the website as it was crashing, like a lot of you, I'm sure. Didn't need to panic in the end, as it is still available on the Character Options website. It's a beautiful set. I love the packaging. The likeness to Joe Martin is uncanny. It's like she's been shrunk down. There's a huge amount of new sculpting on this figure. The TARDIS has some new sculpting on the roof. For the lantern as well, otherwise I think it is mainly a reuse of the classic Who TARDIS. Coming with the Division Blaster is a nice extra touch too. I need to get it on the shelf, what am I doing? It's still in the box. Oh. Go and check out the reveal video on Characters YouTube to learn more about the set and to see how excited Joe Martin is to see herself as an action figure. If you want to hear more about how this figure was created, why it took a long time to release and why the website couldn't cope with demand, then you should check out that same episode of the Who Corner to Corner podcast from the 17th of March with Al Dewar and Ed Barnett Ward. Links will be in the description as usual. Okay, on to BNM news. There was a post on the BNM Doctor Who action figure news and information array Facebook group. 
my usual source for this info. The chap who runs the group has links to BNN and gets permission to reveal some info to us hardcore Doctor Who figure fans in advance of release. And he hasn't let me down yet. On this occasion though, this post was taken down as he felt he'd posted it too early and the sets are still subject to change. So these aren't finalised details. With that disclaimer, let's read through. In July 2024, we should hopefully be getting the long-awaited History of the Dark set 16, representing Resurrection of the Daleks. That should be 18, actually, as the last set was History of the Daleks set 16 slash 17. And also a three-pack simply titled Friends and Foes. I imagine this will change. Then in October, we should hopefully see History of the Daleks set 19, not 17, representing the Series 1 finale, Parting of the Ways, plus also an untitled Mysterious Deluxe Davros set. So notably, there's only four sets seemingly coming out at BNN this year, compared to the six we got last year. Also, it seems there's no Doctor and TARDIS set lined up. In short, we have two History of the Daleks sets, one a three-pack, and a Davros set. I can only speculate on why the reduction, but perhaps it may be that the sales weren't so strong last year. Based on social media, it appears there are still plenty of last year's sets on shelves at many BNM stores, so perhaps BNM wanted to streamline their offering this year. Let's run through each of these sets and think about which figures could be included in them. First up, we have History of the Daleks set 18, based on Resurrection of the Daleks. Many of us were expecting this set last year, but instead we got a set based on Revelation of the Daleks first, so they were done out of order. I assume this was to avoid having two similar sets being released in stores at the same time, or roughly at the same time. The Remembrance of the Daleks set last year had the Black Renegade Supreme and Grey Drone, which looks very similar to what we would expect in this new set, a Black Resurrection Supreme and Grey Drone. But like the Revelation set last year, they could just put two Resurrection Grey Drones in there but I think that would annoy collectors as that Resurrection Supreme was only released once before. Next is the set we know least about and that is the Friends and Foes 3 pack which is quite a vague title. That's not a lot to go on. The last time we had something with that sort of name was back in 2020 with the Friends and Foe of the 13th Doctor set with Yaz, Ryan and the Jadoon. Here we don't have an era or a Doctor to focus in on. Based on what our duo said on the Who Corner to Corner podcast, we can rule out classic companions and assume it's a new series focus set. Unless he's throwing us off the scent, of course. Assuming he's not, it's hard to imagine this set not just including re-releases of figures, as the new series is pretty well catered for. Well, Series 7 onwards, much less so. And don't forget, this is a budget line at BM, so we're not going to get entirely newly sculpted figures here. Perhaps they might try to release new series companions that haven't had a release before, perhaps Nardol or Dan, using primeval figures for the body and then sculpting new heads. Or maybe release a repaint of the Clara figure to give us a variant. Or maybe tying in with the recent 60th anniversary specials, release a new version of Donna of her more iconic look in Series 4 with a new hair and coat piece. In terms of the faux aspect, that's tricky as again it's hard to imagine it's not a re-release or straightforward repaint. Given Tenant returned for the 60th, perhaps it could be something from the 10th Doctor era. If they're pushing the boat out, they could do these guys, the Flood, slash Infected Andy Stone, or a Tritivore, since the 2009 specials are underrepresented. These are my lovingly made customs, by the way. They could do these, but less accurately, reusing existing figure bodies and creating new heads, slash hands. What are your thoughts on this one? What do you think's included in it? It's difficult as the title's so broad, I could be here hours speculating about what could be in it and mooting ideas. Right, on to History of the Dark set 19 for Parting of the Ways. Well, I assume it's going to be our lovely, accurate bronze Dalek sculpt and maybe a Dalek Emperor Guard with Black Dome, but are character going to treat us to some new arm attachments for them? As there are a few different ones in this episode, mainly hidden in the background of Emperor Dalek scenes. First option is quite a prominently featured attachment, and that's the Blowtorch. Character did release this variant back with the old, completely ill-proportioned Dalek sculpt, so an upgrade wouldn't hurt. I did my own quick custom, taking this arm from this old Dalek and sticking it in the newer, accurate bronze Dalek sculpt, but it's not quite in proportion, so a new arm sculpt would be better. Then we can move on to the variety of Emperor Dalek guards. I've done a custom of one recently, actually, with a sonic cannon arm and an anti-grav base. Check out Supreme Customs for 3D printed Dalek parts if you're interested. Then there's one with a sensor arm and another with a buzzsaw arm and a darker paint scheme on the casing. These are also available from Supreme's Customs in case character don't produce these arm attachments. 
So there are some nice Dalek variant options here to make it a more unique set. Last but not least, we have a mooted Deluxe Davros set. Last time we had a Davros set was back in 2022 in the creation of the Dalek set, based on, of course, Genesis of the Daleks, with a lovely, more accurately painted Michael Wisher Davros and a Genesis Dalek with a lovely toyetic feature of removable arms and plug-in wire accessories that go into the back of the arms. That was a great set. I think here it's safe to say we're at last getting a reissue of the Remembrance of the Daleks Emperor Davros. Why, you ask? Well, it's effectively confirmed in the Who Corner to Corner podcast episode by Al himself. Any update on the Emperor Dalek being re-released mm. after the uh, mould was found? Rediscovered. Emperor Dalek I don't Davros. Know or the, da the Davros one. There is an update on that. All I say is just uh, wait and see and put so, 15 okay. quid in the bank quietly and you might be able to spend it later in the year. <laughs> In a previous instalment of the podcast, he confirmed that they had found the tooling moulds for this figure, which they previously thought were lost or destroyed. Whether this Davros will come with the destroyed Imperial Dalek, showing off the Dalek mutant inside, remains to be seen. I'd be surprised, but this is a deluxe set after all, and it would make many a fan happy since the original release of this set is super rare. If not, Davros will presumably come with a standard Imperial Dalek. Before we go, there have also been leaked photos of presumably an online exclusive set for Destiny of the Daleks. We've seen images come out for two female Mavellan variants, one Caucasian and one with a black skin tone. Production samples have appeared via a Chinese seller, so it would seem the tooling has been done and would confirm that they are due to release. I'm excited for these as I love Destiny of the Daleks, despite its flaws, and I'm partial to a flashy disco outfit. I actually alluded to these figures way back at the end of my video titled Doctor Who 2022 BM Figure Sets Delayed, update on release dates, pricing and product codes. You should also expect a second character online exclusive set this year, hopefully. I have no idea when it's coming out, there's been no rumours or intel on that, but I have seen images of the figures included in the set. Now I can't say any more, as I don't want to betray the trust of the original source of this, and I don't want to annoy the head of the figure line, Al Dewar. All that I can say vaguely is that the story on which the figures in the set are based is in a similar vein to the previous character online set from earlier this year in March 2022. The Warriors of the Deep set. Check out my unboxing review video on that set, it's good I promise. So I'm surprised it's taken this long, but it would seem with these leaked images that it won't be too long until release, hopefully. Given these appear to be entirely newly sculpted figures, I can't spot any reused parts. There's two different head variants to boot as well. I sincerely doubt it would work within the confined budgets of the B&M sets, so I assume it will be an online exclusive. And whilst editing this video on the 3rd of April, photos of the set in its packaging have been leaked via a Chinese seller. It will be called the Ruins of Skaro Collector Figure Set, and as I was hoping, it includes a kamikaze dialect figure with the bombs attached to the case which is great news since that only had one previous release back in the fourth Doctor Adventure set of 2009. The photo also confirms it will indeed be a character online exclusive. Hooray, I look forward to it. And that's all folks, it looks like we've been treated very well this year with new Doctor Who figures and toys. Can't wait to get them, better start saving up. As always don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell wherever it is, and if you're feeling generous why not click on that super thanks button. And if you do that, you'll get a mention in a video. Also go and follow me on X, the artist formerly known as Twitter, and on Instagram at the links shown on screen. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.